Hello, what we're going to look at here is a demonstration of using the PicoScope to make measurements for the low pass filter circuit. So the first thing I have set up is, and you have to understand that this is a low pass filter. So it's going to allow frequencies to pass through that are under the critical frequency. And ours is around 12 kilohertz. So one kilohertz signal should pass through easily. And what I'm looking at here is the comparison of the input signal in the top blue channel compared to the output signal on the bottom red channel. And if you look at the measurements of the A RMS value compared to the B RMS value, they're exactly the same. So that's its maximum output at that particular frequency. So what we want to do next is uh, adjust the frequency and what, see what happens to the output voltage. So I can go up to very high frequency. So let me type in 80 kilohertz and I can just click on that box and delete that one and type in 80 and then just click anywhere else. Now you'll notice what happens is the time base value is not right. So we just have to go down to maybe 20 microseconds per division. And you'll notice here dramatically that the output is now dropped uh, down to eight millivolts RMS from about 140. Okay, so it's very much attenuated. Now, that just kind of proves that our filter seems to work. Now let's see if we can type in the critical frequency. And at least for my build of the circuit, it was about 12.3 uh, kilohertz. So let's just see if that does make sense. So just click anywhere. And the other thing I want to do is just change the time base setting and look at the voltage here. If I take 140 millivolts and multiply it by one over the square root of two, and that's going to give me the minus three dB point, it works out to be 100 millivolts. And that's what I'm measuring. Okay, so it seems to all make sense as to what we expected here. So uh, about 140 millivolts coming in, which is 200 millivolts peak, is giving me 102 millivolts RMS. Okay, so that all seems to work. So let's look at how to do some things on the scope here. Because you're all new to this, we want to see how things work. So let's start off by how do I change the vertical setting so that maybe I, I can measure a smaller or larger signal? Well, you do that by clicking here. And the first thing you want to make sure is that the switch on your scope probe set to the times 10 position and the probe setting is also standard times 10. That's critical. If you don't do that, you won't get the proper measurements. And right now, having between maybe two divisions or you know, the, the sine wave ranging of two divisions, three divisions is fine. But if I go too low, you'll see that for channel A, um, that, that's as low as it gets on this scope. But if I go too high, then that's maybe too small. So you want to pick something that's going to give you a couple of divisions. So that seems to work fine. And for channel B, same thing here. It only goes down to plus and minus 500 millivolts. And that gives you a reading of, you can see right here, plus and minus five or, or one volt means 0.2 volts per division. So I'm going to leave this, I'm going to leave them both at uh, plus and minus one volt per division, which is 0 0.2 volts per division. Sorry, when I said plus and minus one, that's for the entire 10 divisions. Okay, so that's why if you take the two volts divided by 10, it's 0.2 volts. So the next thing I want to do is change the frequency. And we do that up here and you can type it in, but the quickest way is probably just to click on plus and minus. And you wanna have somewhere between uh, no less than three Okay, so 10 would not be the right setting. 50 microseconds per division would be okay. And no more than 10. Okay, somewhere between 3 and 10 would be okay. So that's the vertical setting. Now, if you want to move the position, the vertical position of the waveform, well, on the channel A, you'd move over to the left-hand side and you'd go over to where the values are over here. And you notice you can move this up and down, and you want it to lock in on a zero. It would make a lot more sense to lock it in a zero than an odd value. To do it for the bottom B trace, you have to come over to the right and move this up and down. 
Okay, and all that's making sense. The next thing you want to make sure is that the trigger is uh, probably at 50% and at zero volts, so that when it's going through that rising edge of the sine wave, it's going to trigger. Normally, you want the trigger on auto. We'll eventually discuss using none and normal, but for what we do in the lab, it's mostly um, auto. The next thing we want to do is make some measurements. Let's say, well, to, to make the measurements, you click on the measurements tab, and let's say I wanted to measure the peak-to-peak -peak value of channel A. That should be 402 millivolts. I can measure just the peak value, uh, but that's how you would do it. And I'd like to see at least the frequency on A, RMS on A, and RMS on B, so we can do some comparisons. So now I'll close that window. The next thing you might want to do is measure with cursors. And to do that, you have, uh, sorry, I've got the wrong one. The, here they use the name rulers, but a lot of oscilloscopes will use the name cursors. So I'm going to turn them on, okay? And I'm going to just, you can bring them up or down. They normally sit at that top position. And let's say if I turn it off, I think it'll automatically come on when I bring it here. So I'm just gonna measure the minimum voltage and the maximum voltage. The two verticals sit at the top and the two horizontals sit at the bottom left. If I wanted to measure the period, it might be from here to here. Okay, I'm just doing this really rough and it's telling me the period is 82 microseconds. That's the difference from one cursor to the other. And the peak to peak value, the low end is minus 210, the high end is 182, giving me about 400. Nothing here is gonna be super accurate. Uh, as long as your results are probably within 10%, uh, that's going to be fine, even, even 20%. Okay, so those readings are all okay. Now the next thing I want to show you is a technique, I'm going to turn off the cursors here, a technique that we can use to measure the output over a range of frequencies. And that's what you're going to be doing in the lab. You're actually going from 5 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz. And what this this um, picoscope can do is to generate something called a sweep. And let me show you how to do that. Oops, that's the circuit. Let's go back to the picoscope. And to generate a sweep, we're going to click on, just give me a second. We're gonna go over to the generator and change over to sweep. So that's what you wanna select. Let's turn the basic off. I think, we, I think we may need to have that on for the sweep, sorry. So that's gonna be on, that's gonna be in sweep. We're gonna sweep upwards. We're going to have a starting frequency of five kilohertz. Okay, you might not be able to see all of the screen, but it's five kilohertz. We wanna have an ending frequency of 100 kilohertz. Okay, and we're going to step through at five kilohertz increments. So five kilohertz, so uh, start at five, end at 100, increment at uh, five kilohertz increments. Here I'm gonna set it up for four seconds, but I'm actually gonna change it to, to one, just to speed up this demo, or maybe two. So now that we have all that, okay, we, we want it to generate automatically between the minimum and the maximum. And to get this to work, you have to click uh, on, sweep frequency on, and it should begin to do that. Yeah, it's 10 kilohertz now, 15, 20, 25. And notice that the output is, is changing. So this is a way you can make your measurements. Now you might wanna add more time to the increment level because you'll have to take the readings, but you can see that my output as I go up in frequency is uh, is changing so now and you read the frequency here so we're at 80 kilohertz 85 90 95 and 100 so when we got to 100 we were down to that and notice it automatically goes back down to 5 kilohertz now here's another unique thing that i can do let's say i'm looking for that cutoff or critical frequency one of the things that i can do is set my 
minimum and maximum, maybe a kilohertz above and below what I think it is, and then set the frequency increment. Uh, I put it here to 10, but let's go to 100. That's a bit too small. Okay, now I've got it set to 100. And what I'm going to do is monitor at what frequency I get about 100 millivolts. Okay, we're almost there, 103, because that's the 0 0.707. So there, it happened at about 12.5 kilohertz. Okay, so uh, when it gets to that point, that's the minus 3 dB point. So that's a good way to check for that. Very useful. That's, that's way, the way I might get you to do in the lab as well. Another useful feature with this picoscope is once you've set everything up, especially the, the time base, the vertical sensitivity, the probe settings for times 10, the sweep, the 200 millivolts, all your measurements. Once you've done that, you don't want to have to set it up every time you open the software. So the software has a feature called save. And I can click on save and I can save the image. Okay, that's one of the things I can save. Uh, but I can also save something called the uh, settings file. And that's the one I use probably the most often is the Picoscope setting file. And I can just say, I can call this lab two filters. And I'll put winter 2022 20, in here and then save that, save it to your hard drive, somewhere's where you'll know where you can retrieve it. But then I can open that up and click on uh, the file here, lab two filters, winter 2022. And if I open that up, it loads the file and all the settings come back to the way that we had it when we uh, stopped or saved the file. And you can have different settings that depend on which lab you're currently working on. So very, very useful.